Okay. No, well, just thanks, Jasper, and um, thank you for the opportunity of, of coming here and um, having a bit of a conversation. Um, I hope this will be a bit of a conversation. I have a little a few slides to sort of set the scene, and interestingly enough, it sort of um, relates back to the first um, speaker and what Lou was saying about um, currents and New Zealand's position in the world and that sort of thing, and I want to look at it from an agricultural point of view. Uh, I really want to look at um, what would be a sustainable and resilient agriculture, and it has to relate to the place it's in. And, and then I just want to put a little bit about um, a quite different way of doing agriculture. So this is going to be very different from what you've just been hearing about. To start off, if you look at this globe here, you'll notice where we are in the world. That's half the world, and uh, mostly Pacific Ocean. And we have this large piece of landmass, relatively large landmass, stuck in the middle of nowhere in that big ocean. And that's very critical to, to the nature of this place and where it is. And um, so one of the first things is it is sort of right bang in middle latitudes. It's a, a temperate climate country. It's very long across um, latitudes, so it's quite variable. There's a lot of variation in the New Zealand environment as well and the New Zealand landscape, and that has a lot of... Um, meaning in terms of agriculture, because agriculture has to be related, as I say, to a place and the nature of this place. So if it's quite a variable place, then our agriculture should be quite variable as well. So I'm actually in the end going to talk about one type of agriculture that might be suitable, and I'm not going to say and saying it's the only one. Um, the really important point is that it relates to the place you're in. And so I have these big changes between summer and winter, which are very seasonal, but unlike in Europe, our seasons are very variable as well, partly because we're stuck in this big ocean, it swirls around and water being water, it's very changeable uh, and so are the winds. And so what I want to do is a very brief little story about what New Zealand's place in the world is. So we start, don't need to read it too much there about the geology. We're on this ring of fire uh, around the Pacific. So this um, slice of actually continental material that's uh, stuck down between Antarctica and Australia and if you look at the sort of the whitey stuff in that lower bit down there, that's all continental material. We're actually a continent, New Zealand, but we're mostly under the water. Uh, and we go up and down a lot because we're on this tectonic plate boundary. So we have these uplifted mountains and it's very fractured and broken rock and we have these very intense rainfalls come to in a minute as well. So we have these uh, rapid mountains to sea rivers and, and, and uh, so our environment is, is this sort of shaky islands, um, um, very mountainous, very wet, watery country that we live in. And so we just um, go on to the next one. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is not quite as good. I don't have as good as graphics as Lou has in terms of his dynamics, but um, this is the same circulation around Antarctica, um, around all the oceans of the world, so it links them together. And that circulation around Antarctica and how it changes is, is really important to our climate, along with the big circulation in the South Pacific. So we've got these big circulations that come in, they meet together, and we have the warm coming down from the top and the mineral and cool water up from the bottom. And that's why we have very productive seas around New Zealand. In fact, we do very little about our marine environment in terms of marine um, farming. Uh, it's uh, not actually farming, don't actually farm it. We, um, we rob the oceans, really. Um, but that's another, another topic, so I won't get into that. <laughs> but uh, um, we are in this basically very watery thing influenced by, um, by those ocean circulations and the winds as well around them. What I want to show here though is that, um, you know, we might think we're all right with climate change and that, but we're middle latitude, and middle latitude means maximum change from climate, right? The pole will stay cold and the tropics stay hot, and the middle latitudes change the most. So pre-10,000 years ago, that little diagram in New Zealand there, trying to show you, we're basically tussock grasslands, like sort of tundra, Canada, Canadian tundra land, okay? Trees had to really retreat back. And they've all re-vegetated since. And over a period of time, have diversified again. They've come back from their little refuges and, and recolonized the land. Um, but what it does mean that under our present climate and circumstances, we're basically a forested country. That's the natural cover of this land. That goes for various evolutionary, historical, or geological reasons as well, in terms of how we came to be where we are, and we developed this very different type of uh, forest. Uh, we're actually a rainforest, but we're a temperate rainforest. We're an unusual rainforest. And um, 
and our forests not only build a great amount of biomass and diversity in the forest itself, but they also develop nutrients and nutrient stores in the soil, and that's very unusual for a rainforest. So we have this really re re remarkable forest um, as, as a natural forest environment. Uh, uh, and then along came people, and you know the story of what happens when people come. Um, so we, we've, as somebody mentioned earlier, we're basically a country of recent immigrants, uh, including Polynesian, both Polynesian and European, pretty recent, and we've both done a lot of damage to our forest. Um, and that's, this is these clever scientists who look at the pollen counts and find out where things are in that. There's a bit of natural change as well. Taupo is an active volcano, uh, and it erupts every so often. And when it does so, it can do so in a pretty mighty heave and um, destroyed a lot of forest in the middle of the North Island, which were naturally revegetated re in the time then people came into this country and started cutting them, burning them down again. Um, so we, we have this sort of forested land and uh, for one reason or another, whether it was trying to chase moa or whether it was trying to make bracken grow, which is not a very edible thing, but you can eat it, um, or whether it was trying to make uh, Mother England have its dairy and beef and sheep, we burnt the forest. And I have to own up to that. My grandfather burnt the forest too. I come from a farming background. My parents are sheep and beef farmers in Hawke's Bay, and I've plenty, plenty of relatives who are still farming. And uh, my grandfather put a match to a huge lot of forest. Um, so, you know, we, we've, all, we, we've all done that sort of stuff. But what should we do about it? I mean, so I just want to spend very briefly on a, a few comments about what might be an alternative way of doing agriculture in this forested country, naturally forested land. Um, the other thing about it is, I mean, this is a, just a picture of, you know, cedar mountains, forested cover, just to make the point. Um, and the point's also been made, we have a huge lot of introduced species in New Zealand from insects to mammals to plants, to all sorts of natural things have been introduced. Introduced into very different um, ecosystems. Um, and so we have this real mixed bag. Now, where I come from is, well, where do we go from here? I mean, that's where we're at. And so all these creatures are here, all these trees are here. We can grow apples and pears here. They don't come from New Zealand, obviously, enough. But they grow extremely well here. So from a permaculture point of view, if we're trying to look at what's appropriate to this place, but also what are the resources that are here now and what we can make use of, then what would be the type of agriculture that we might have uh, that is resilient and productive? And so this is where this idea of food forests, but um, it's sort of a horseshoe shape. And this is sort of the template that we developed originally around how to do a food forest. Because... Uh, I think Matthew talked about edges and the dynamics of edges right at the beginning. Um, the most productive uh, part of a forest is actually its edge. It's some margin, uh, margin between the meadows and all the sort of herbaceous uh, and the, the, the little shrubbery and then the bigger trees and up to your big, bigger trees. And that's where nature is really productive because it's the, it is that growth phase. Um, and in fact... Um, what we're suggesting is, is it is a management. I mean, all agriculture involves some management of the natural environment. Um, but, you know, when it boils down to it, we are part of the natural environment as well. And if we could only use our intelligence in the right way, we might better work with that natural environment and be a natural organism and produce a more productive environment which can feed ourselves as well as the birds and the bees. Um, and that's what this is about. So this is a template. To the north is the open area where the meadow is, bacterial, comes more back into the forest area, back in the more fungal uh, land uh, soils behind. Um, and in that zone, you can have this huge diversity. And so the main thing about um, diversity is really is the resilience of the whole system. Um, and so just in terms of clicking through quickly, this is an example that Jasper talks about. This is a block of land in the valley. It had four paddocks for grazing um, in 2010 when that photograph was taken. Um, 
But all those colored dots, the, the colors represent different things, like whether they're nuts or whether they're pip fruit or stone fruit or citrus or, or whether they're shelter or nutrient accumulation trees or whatever they are. And there's a whole lot of different guilds in there. Guilds are things that like to sort of live together as trees, liking to live together. And so what we're trying to do here is demonstrate on a commercial level a type of forest-based agriculture that will produce far more produce on that area of land than ever that grazing did. Uh, it'll be far more resilient to droughts and storms and floods and whatever climate change there might be in it as they come, you know. So it's, it's an attempt to um, demonstrate a forest-based agriculture in New Zealand. Uh, no, those are, I'll leave those up there. That's what I thought were the main points about uh, forest-based agriculture.